This is One on One. We are pleased to welcome Lisa Eve, who is Vice President of State Government Affairs, New Jersey, New York, Connecticut, for Verizon. Good to see you. Good to see you again. Yeah. Uh, last time we talked. Well, you know what? You were with us at for our NJ PAC series. Yes. One on one. We were together for the third annual, well, the gala. There's a first gala, but the third year celebration for NJTV where you and Verizon were honored, right? Yes, it was a tremendous honor to uh, accept this extraordinary award on behalf of Verizon. We were such a great, um, we were so pleased to be a proud supporter of NJTV and, and, and will be for a while. But yes, you were literally one of the very first people <laughs> that I met when I started with Verizon. So I feel like you're like a BFF. So exactly. it's all good I stuff. I said, come on, you go, what are we going to talk about? I said, don't worry, trust me. <laughs> Last, famous last words, don't worry, trust me. All right. Um, <laughs> since this is about Newark at a crossroads, talk yes. to us. Uh, you've had a little bit of time here, yes. right, a little bit more than the first time we talked. Your impressions of this city, Newark? It's, it's an extraordinary place, an ex extraordinary place. Yes, it's had some challenging times, you know, an old industrial city uh, that has had some challenges in the past, but I believe, based upon what I've witnessed here in a little bit more than a year, that clearly, the worst is behind Newark, and only brighter days are ahead. Um, the work that Verizon done has done in the city, I believe, is second to none. We have a very long history. We've been providing telecommunication services to Newark residents for more than a year. Um, it's, as you know, uh, the state's largest city. We have 15,000 employees in New Jersey. Hundreds of Newark residents uh, go to work every day, supporting their families, working for Verizon, so that we can, in turn, provide you know best-in-class communication services to Newark residents. So um, we give a lot to Newark, but we also, as a company, get a lot in return. And it's been a great partnership that's, as I said, been in existence for more than 100 years and continues to this day. 100 years. 100, 100, 100, more than 100 years um, that uh, we've been providing services. The predecessor to Verizon, New Jersey Bell, um, more than 100 years ago, started providing services to Newark residents. Our uh, New Jersey headquarters, um, the initial New Jersey Bell headquarters, 540 Broad Street, this extraordinarily historic and beautiful building. Uh, the architect, I think his last name is Walker. I mean, if people haven't been in this building, it's amazing. It's, it's on the, you know, it's nationally recognized in terms of its beauty. It was our headquarters in 1929, and it's a place <laughs> where I show up to work uh, many days of the week, and my colleagues do, and we still do business there, and it's still very much the heart of, of downtown. So it's just one of the many ways that uh, Verizon and Newark have a very strong partnership. You talk to us about um, <clears throat> challenges, because you're on the board of, of NJ Pack, New Jersey Performing Arts yes. Center. So you got the arts piece. <clears throat> Excuse me. You got the media piece with uh, NJTV, which is having a stronger and stronger presence in the city of Newark. Those are some really great things going on. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but you got the educational stuff happening, the, the ongoing educational challenges, right? Verizon's commitment to education and helping prepare young people, children, to be the best students they could be and ultimately the best citizens. Talk about that. Well, it's one of the very many reasons why I'm so proud to work for this company. As you know, I spent the vast majority of my professional career in public service. Uh, I enjoyed it. I think it's a calling, a very special calling, and there's really no company that I would have left public service to work for other than Verizon. Yes, it's this massive company, Fortune 20 company, that proudly calls uh, New Jersey home, but it has this history of giving in terms of philanthropic work, but it's now the leading technology company of our time. There are services and products, the connectivity that we provide with a best-in-class fiber network. Explain that, we, that. Break that down. So we've got our Fios product that a lot of people are familiar with, right? Not to get into too many details, but most of our, actually all of our cable competitors provide cable services using a combination of copper and fiber. Our network is all fiber. What does that mean? 
to the typical person, it means the following. The product is much better, it's faster, it's more robust, uh, it provides better services, and that's why so many people love our Fios product. We are undertaking right now, today, in the city of Newark, um, a massive multi-million dollar uh, Fios build. We've already spent tens of millions of dollars What's a Fios in Newark. Build? It basically is a process for which we are going under the city streets, mm. going in buildings, providing this infrastructure, this communications infrastructure, so that thousands of New Jerseyans at every ward across the city can access the best communications infrastructure on the planet. So, so Lisa, one second. When, when it's talked about Newark would be a 100% fiber town. Yes. That sounds great. I don't even know what it means. It basically, From a practical point of view. It means that any Newark resident any Newark resident who wants to have access to the best communications infrastructure so that they can work, they can study uh, at home, they can enjoy television, they can talk on the phone, they can do whatever they want using this infrastructure. They're going to have the best infrastructure possible to do this, our all fiber, all Fios network. It is, it's a network that enables, if you're going on the internet, for you to download things very quickly for you to upload very quickly if you're watching something on television, the clarity that you will have that picture on your screen. Um, we have obviously many wireless customers across uh, the city and across the state. We have the most robust wireless network anywhere in the country. And so whether you want to communicate via your cell phone or whether you want to communicate via Skype or whether you want to use your landline phone using our, our fiber network, we provide so many different avenues for people to communicate and to learn and to, and to grow. But here's the thing, in a couple minutes we have left. As, as I'm listening to you, I'm thinking, all right, other than the fact that you are an incredible cheerleader for your organization and you make that case very well, I'm thinking, all right, the impact that what everything Alicia just said mm -hmm. has on the future of this city, you know, as we do this program, Newark at a Crossroads. As they're at the crossroads, what could that mean to the future of this city? Everything you just said. I think it's fundamental. It's fundamental. Make the case. It's fundamental for two reasons. One is um, as children are coming home and they're doing their homework and they want access to the internet, they will have the best uh, infrastructure th for them to be able to access the internet for someone who wants to look for Which a could job. potentially make them better students. Better students. More contributing citizens. And more contributing citizens. Get better jobs, et cetera, et cetera. Small, medium-sized, large businesses all across uh, the city, particularly the tech industry that have a need for very fast speeds. Uh, they don't want to have an, an infrastructure, communication infrastructure that they can't count on. They can count on our files infrastructure. If they're using a wireless network, they need to have a wireless network that they can count on. They can count on uh, Verizon's 4G LTE network. So. It is, in my view, central to the economic vibrancy of, of the city of Newark, and it is, I think, fundamental to so many things that so many families are trying to do. I mean, one of the things that, you know, Verizon... A few seconds, go ahead. Oh, a couple of things. You know, one of the things that I learned is we're working on a product where if you can put a chip on someone's tongue and then miles away, a doctor can read, you know, the glucose readings, right? This is something that Verizon's doing and something that is enabled because of our wireless network. Next thing, you, next thing you're going to tell me about, you do that on the next show. Okay. Because we're out All of time. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so. Lisa, that was great. You know, I love having you on because I learned so much. I don't have to work so much either. So, you know, I don't that even know great. what I'm going to say. But you know what? <laughs> no, what is so funny? Great. I'm looking... I'm One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this special edition of One on One with Steve Adubato at NJIT has been provided by New Jersey Institute of Technology, Prudential Financial's Global Communications Department, Audible.com, Barnabas Health, TD Bank, Josh S. Weston, and by the law firm of Gibbons PC. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. This program has been made possible in part by the Fidelco Group.